going to go ahead and get started. I've got a couple of things um, to show you first that people have shared with me. And then um, I'm going to make three cards with you. Hi, Emily. Emily's coming home from UC on Friday, I think, Friday or Saturday. Can't wait to see her. Um, but anyways, Emily is my daughter, if you don't already know that. She's my youngest daughter, and she's a student in the physical therapy department at University of Cincinnati. Okay, so um, before I show you the three cards we are going to make, <clears throat> and I'm going to teach you a technique with one of them, um, I want to show you a few cards that I received. I got this one from Melinda on my team and that was for Thanksgiving I love all the fall colors in it and I don't know if you can tell she's got the uh, milk jug popped up on dimensional so that's fun um, and then this is a birthday card I received from her kind of has that uh, shabby chic look or antique look to it and she decorated the inside as well. I think she did on this one too. Maybe not. Nope. Just a, a nice message. Um, another birthday card I received. And I thought this was funny because, um, and they wrote, Tammy and Beth wrote a beautiful note in there. Um, but Tammy and Beth are the women where I do my stamp classes in Cincinnati um, at their home. But this is a card way back from way back in the day at one of my classes that um, Tammy took as a beginning stamper. Um, so I thought that was fun that I received that. And then I also have this beautiful one from Debbie Price. And this is part of the Christmas Time is Here product suite, um, which is, you know, we think Christmas when we see this suite, but honestly, it can be used for so many different occasions and way beyond Christmas as she has done here and then I believe I posted this on my VIP group but um, this was from Marty Blair one of my customers and um, great card maker um, scrapbooker crafter of all kinds let me tell you I feel like she does it all when it comes to crafting but um, she made this, and this was the first Christmas card I received of the year. This is from my teammate, friend, Jackie Meyer. I don't know if you can tell, but she, on the um, gift wrap bows and the scarf of the snowman, she used Wink of Stella. So that's a nice, oh, and on the nose she used, I didn't notice this before, on the nose she used a bit of that fine tip glue to give it some dimension. So that's fun. And this I received from Patty Schuler this week. And not only is it a beautiful card, I love that she did a totally different size. And it does fit in a, um, like a business envelope, a long envelope. But um, I just found this card to be really intriguing. And then she also sent me a surprise of some Color Street nails. So I'm looking forward to trying those. Um, I've thought about trying them and I just haven't for whatever reason. And um, yes, this week on Saturday, I will be celebrating my 55th birthday, which is a little bit hard to believe, but hey, you know, it's all good. Okay, so tonight we're going to be using the Snowfront stamp set, and this is what I like to call a scene builder stamp set, okay? And then... Um, and Mary Lou Rolfus, this is actually um, the class you attended last month, I believe. And I'm also showing the Itty Bitty Christmas stamp set because I think it's just wonderful. I love um, how many different sayings there are in it. And um, for the Christmas holiday season, I mean, there's really something, you know, if you're giving baked goods... From our house to yours, oh, what yum, another, you know, if you're sending treats or something. Um, blessed Christmas wishes, believe, very merry, joy to the world, all kinds of things. And it's been probably one of my top three stamp sets 
this holiday season, this Christmas season, okay? So basically, as we do these three cards, we're using nearly all of the stamps. The only thing we're not is just a couple of tiny little ones or maybe one of two of the little ones. But otherwise, we'll be using up all of the stamps in this wonderful set. This is the first one. We're gonna be sending lots of love at Christmas. And my featured colors are basic gray and balmy blue. So I have a very simple layout. My, whoops, got two there. My card base is Smoky Slate. And I have two layers. The one is basic gray, and that measures four and a quarter by three inches. <clears throat> and then on top of that will be black, and that measures four by two and three quarter. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these layers on first. Just to take care of some of, oops, some of the pieces and get them out of the way. Hi, Jocelyn. Thanks for joining me. Jocelyn is another fabulous crafter, does lots of different kinds of crafting. Um, I purchased a front door wreath from her and I absolutely love it. I was a little bit sad when I took it down for um, to put up my Christmas wreath, but I've got it hanging inside my house now because I just love it. Okay, so let's get started with the stamping. We might want to stamp our envelope too. This piece measures, <clears throat> it measures four, did I cut the right size for that? Yes, four inches by two and five eighths. Let me double check that. Make sure I cut it properly. Yes. So it's four inches by two and five eighths. Okay. And at the class last month, we had a little bit debate on which part of the card we should start with. I started by stamping the trees and then put the water on. And then some people started with the water and then put the trees on. Either way, I think I tend to start with whatever is my focal point, okay? I'm gonna put a little piece of scrap paper under here. And I'm going to, I love this stamp. It's got the three trees on all together. And the reason I started with the three trees is I wanted to make sure the majority of the tree was on the cardstock, not hanging off somewhere. Other people felt it was easier to stamp the water and then put the trees on the water or the ice, whatever you want to say, or the snow. Now this, I will say, I did stamp off because I did not want the balmy blue color to be quite as heavy. And actually, it looks like I might have stamped off twice, but that's okay. And I'm going to put some more of that over here. And I'm just going to kind of do that, give it a little dimension. Okay. Then I'm going to stamp the log house. This reminds me of Little House on the Prairie. Oh, one of my favorite shows. Did anybody love that show like I did? And you know, there just isn't TV like that anymore, to be honest. I have a hard time finding things um, that I really want to watch on TV, okay? Before I get too close to the bottom, and I could have done this first as well, but I knew how much space to leave, okay? I'm going to put the sentiment, lots of love at Christmas. And then the last image I'm going to stamp is this cute little snowman. And I don't want him too dark. 
and I kind of just fit them in the curve above that curve of Christmas. Okay. Now I could also add a little more of the blue, but I really want to stamp it off and do something like this. Okay, again, just adding a little more dimension. You can use as much or as little as you'd like. Okay, and if I really wanted to go crazy, I could add some snowflakes. Again, I want them just very, very light. I tend to be a little more um, simple in my style of stamping, but I want to show you another option in case you like to have a little more detail on there. So you can, um, of course, add the little snowflakes. Another option would be to do some sponging in there, okay? And I do think, so I'm gonna put this on my card front now. All of the card layouts you're going to see tonight are very, very basic. There are layers, but everything's flat. I don't have much that's popped up, okay? So that's that. Cute, isn't it? And I think we should stamp the envelope, don't you? Looks like I got a smudge of something on there. So I think I'm just going to stamp the trees. And then I'm going to stamp some of the blue. I'm going to stamp off twice. So I want it light. And then I think I'll add the little snowman here. So we're building a little scene on, there you go, on the front of the envelope. Alrighty. Now don't forget, if you would like to win a card from tonight's Facebook Live, you need to be commenting. And I also love hearts and thumbs up when you like things you see. Okay, let me set these aside on my chamois. I don't think I need any of those for the others. Okay, and then I will show you. I'm gonna put away the basic gray, but I'm keeping out the balmy blue because that's going to carry over into each of the cards tonight. Excuse my voice too. I, uh, I don't know if I picked up something from one of my clients, but kind of started last, last evening and through the night and I just sound kind of hoarse. I don't feel terrible. Okay, this is the second card. And of the three we're making tonight, I have to say this is probably my very favorite. Um, I just love cardinals and that meaning behind them that um, they're actually loved ones, a sign of loved ones that have passed and are watching over you or are still with you. And um, both of my parents have passed on, uh, mom about three years ago and dad 29 years ago. So I just love this. Um, Kind of this representation of them and the meaning behind that and then i love too this little bit of burlap ribbon just a tiny little bit accent and here is one um, it's the very same card but i added a sentiment one from the itty bitty christmas stamp set okay all right this time my card base is still the same size but I cut it so it's taller in the vertical direction rather than horizontal. I have a piece of white cardstock for inside. It measures five and a quarter by four inches. I think I need to move this up a little bit. I wanna be careful not to get that in my ink. And then I decided that I really just wanted to step this card up a little bit, but I didn't want to take any focus away from the tree and the cardinals. So I cut an extra layer of the balmy blue cardstock and I ran it through the Big Shot with the subtle embossing folder. Okay, the subtle embossing folder. 
I didn't think this embossing folder would really be that big of a deal to me, but honestly, I you probably use it more than any of my other embossing folders. Next, I have um, Real Red and Whisper White rectangles that have been cut out with the stitched rectangle dies. Okay, stitched stretched stitched rectangle dies. And I'm going to put that flat on here. I'm going to cut a little strip of this burlap ribbon. And ordinarily I'd probably cut two pieces, um, but just for time's sake, I'm only doing one but just two short pieces is all you need. So another great way to use up those um, little bits of leftover ribbon. You know, when you only have a few inches left on your roll, but you don't wanna throw it away, it seems too good to throw away. This is another way you can use up some of those ends. I wanted my angles to be just a little sharper there. Okay, and now I'm ready to stamp. I'm going to stamp using Early Espresso first. And I'm going to start with the tree because that is my focal point. And this I'm actually going to turn the direction on my cardstock. It would just be a little bit easier for me to see over it. Okay, don't forget to comment. Oh, Catherine, I love the birds too. Kathy, I actually thought of you today. I don't think this has ever happened to me, but I sent you, you had won a card from a previous Facebook Live and it came back to me needing 15 more cents. That has never, ever happened to me. I'm usually a really good judge of getting it through the mail and knowing how much postage to put on. Oh, where's my, here it is. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit of crumb cake to the bottom here so the tree doesn't look like it's um, floating in the air. And I think I'm gonna stamp off, yeah. Okay, remember stamping off is just a nice way to get a lighter shade of the same color. That aside, I agree, Georgine. Putting something extra on the envelopes is just a nice little added bonus for people. And I'm glad I just read that because I can go ahead and stamp my tree on here right now. I also like to, my images to go off the corner a little bit. Okay. You know what? I'll do some of the ground here as well. Just a slight bit. Now I'm ready to put on my cardinals. The wonderful thing about this set is they have a bird, two birds, and they both face different directions. Okay, this is really neat. I love that. Now I think when you're using stamps this small, you can put them on this block, but I think I like using them on this size block better because it feels like more of a handle. I feel like I have more control than I do this little one, but any little clear block will do. And then I also just know that I don't have to stick that whole thing in the ink pad. I can just tap on the very corner of the ink pad. I'm going to look over this and see if I can get them sitting on a branch. Yes, I did. And now I'm going to switch to the other one. Same thing. I'm just picking up the ink from a tiny corner there. And I think I'm going to put this one up higher. There. Love it. 
And then the last thing I did was added some balmy blue ink on the back side. And the easiest way to do that and to do it very, very lightly is by using a sponge. And you're just gonna pick up some ink and remember to start light. You can even practice on your scrap paper. Start light because you can always add a bit more and just, just very light touches there, okay? I'm going to add some of that sky background to the, my envelope. I think I should put some cardinals here too. What do you think? Cardinals on the envelope? I'm not gonna wait for your answer. I'm just going to do it. I didn't quite get him on the branch, but that's okay. Maybe it's a branch that has lots of snow on it. There, love it. Now when I put this on my card, I am using, well, I was going to use dimensionals and they're not right here. You know what, they're probably still packed up from um, my class last night. I had, I have to give a shout out to Susan Harper. She had, I would suggest popping this up. I just think it gives it a little bit nicer look, but because my dimensionals must still be packed, I'm gonna do it this way. Alrighty, and then any one of these sentiments would be great to use on a card like this. You could also just put maybe one cardinal there and use this as a sympathy card as well. It could be for birthdays, it could be for all kinds of occasions. Alrighty. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to create this scene. Okay. Same two cards, I just added the sentiment on one. I also changed up the inside. Usually I just put a standard five and a quarter by four inch piece of Whisper White cardstock in. But this card, I used the shimmery white paper. It's one of the recommended papers for when you're watercoloring. And I'm going to show you a trick how to make the stamped images become watercolor images very easily. So, I'm gonna move some of these ink pads out of my way. We're going to be using Mossy Meadow, Soft Suede, and some Balmy Blue again. Again, standard size card base, and this is crumb cake that I'm using. And my layers are Early Espresso and that shimmery white. I'm not sure if you can see the shimmer of that. Well, Pam, I'm glad you like that card with the cardinals on. I think it's sweet. And I'm going to add this to the inside. Just like that. And then I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to do my stamping. For this, get these all ready. For this, I'm going to start with the trees because those are pretty much my focal point. So I'm going to start with the trees. And this I've used, let's see, six, seven stamps on this card, but they're all from this one set, the snow front set, okay? First, I'm going to ink up this stamp, which is fun. It has um, like evergreens on, kind of on a hill or a slope. 
I'm going to have it go off the cardstock just slightly. And I'm putting it in the upper half. Then I'm going to use this tree. Stamp it once. I'm using a smaller tree. And I'm going to stamp that to the left and lower of the big one. And then I'm also going to put one down here in the corner. Now before I do any other stamping, I'm going to use an aqua painter. Aqua painter just means it has water in it. You unscrew the top and you fill it with water. And this helps you just blend colors um, so you get <clears throat> the watercolor look. And just using the tip, I'm not pressing hard at all, just very, very slight. And you can tell I'm doing it kind of quickly. You don't have to be terribly precise because watercolor painting is not terribly precise for the most part. I guess an, argues, an artist might have different opinions, but you know what I mean by that. Trying to give my throat a little rest while I'm doing this part. There. Now I do need to give this time to dry. You don't want it to puddle. One tip I'm going to give you when you're using the aqua painters, don't hold it so high because while you're working, you'll naturally start squeezing the uh, <clears throat> the base that has the water in it. So hold it more at the neck, closer to the tip, and you aren't going to be squeezing water out. You barely need anything to come out. Now, I want to be able to use this again with some other colors, so I need to clean this off. And all you do is rub back and forth on some scrap paper until the water runs clear. Next, I'm going to stamp just a little bit of brown under here. I think it needs something more. I'm going to stamp off just that little bit. And then I'm going to blend that brown and pull some of the green down. Okay. Clean it because I'll want to use it again with a different color. Next, I'm going to be adding um, what I would say is the snow and the ice. I'm using Balmy Blue. There really isn't a right and a wrong side. It's just, a, you know, a top and a bottom. It's just whatever you prefer or how it fits into the scene that you're making. And I'm going to stamp off some of this. Put some more down here. So I'm going to do like that. Okay. And one thing to note, some colors do blend better with water than others. And typically, it's the darker, richer colors that blend a little more, take the water a little bit better, um, because they have more pigment in. But you can still move some of this blue around and take off some of the harsh edges. Now, one thing to note is I'm blending this blue, but I am not touching the green parts that have already been done. If I do that, if I touch those green parts while I'm coloring in the blue, I'll end up pulling green in. Okay? Hi, Sue Thomas. Thanks for joining me. Now I'm gonna give this space a little bit of time to dry because I wanna put my deer in there. But I want this space to dry a little bit first. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the mountain range in. 
And I would say when you're doing something like this, typically you're always going to, um, how do I say, do a practice scene, okay? The reason being that because you'll want to see, you know, how much color you want to add or not. So you might want to practice your stamping off. So when I'm designing something like this, I might cut a few of these sheets that I'm going to stamp and watercolor on before I even start assembling any cards because I want to make sure, especially if I'm making a lot, um, or even if I'm only making one or two, because this way I can play with it a little bit, because this is not a technique I use every day. Okay, the stamping's a little more involved. Now, I like the, the different shades I have on the mountains there, and I want them to be kind of sharper images, so I really am not going to watercolor those at all. Again, if you want to try pulling in some blue, but you can see the blue just doesn't blend quite as well as the green, but that's okay. That happens with different shades. Now I'm going to add my cute little deer. And I want you to see the difference between the deer I just stamped and the one that I've used the aqua painter on. See the difference there? Now watch how these deer just really stand out with a tiny bit of water on them. And the tip of this aqua painter is so fine that it really does allow me to just go over those very small narrow legs and the small body of the deer and because I'm not squeezing water I'm just letting the tip be wet it's not puddling or pooling it's just enough water for me to pull the ink move the ink around and then if I even want to add some shadows I could pick up some from some ink right from my ink pad and this is not hurting the ink pad because our inks are water-based okay oops always clean it off and before you put it away even if you're not using um, using your aqua painter for another color go ahead and clean it off because the next time you use it it's already clean and you don't have to um, be concerned about that or you don't go to use it on a yellow and a blue comes out. Okay. Oh, by the way, just before I got on, I saw that tonight is the last full moon of the decade. So you might want to go outside and take a peek at that afterwards. I plan to. I just mounted that on early espresso, and I'm going to add this to my card front now. Now, yes, this is a winter scene, but what other occasions could we use it for rather than just the holiday season? What else would you use this for? How about birthday? And it makes a great masculine card, doesn't it? It would be a, great for a hunter or a nature lover. It could be used as a thinking of you card. Maybe a retirement card. Somebody's moving out west to retire from cold Ohio weather. It's freezing in Ohio today, central Ohio. It's like 20 something degrees so and very windy so bitter cold all right what do you think ladies 
If you are watching, I would love it if you would comment and share once again. I will be giving away the cards I made, all three. I'm going to give away three tonight. Where's my other one? Here. So if you would like to be the winner of one of these cards, be sure to comment. I'll be using commentpicker.com. The more you comment, the more chances you have of winning the card. Thank you all for joining me. Thanks for sharing part of your evening with me. And if you like what you see here, I would love it if you would subscribe to my blog. And please share this live video and this business page with your crafting friends. Have a good night. If you are in parts of the country that are cold and blustery, please stay warm and enjoy the rest of your week. I will be back on Stampin' Peace VIP group tomorrow at 2 p.m. Okay, tomorrow, 2 p.m. on Stampin' Peace VIP group. I don't know what I'm making yet. It'll be a surprise. Have a good night.